Audi RS5 Coupe 2017 Review The RS5 gets a new twin-turbo V6 engine co-developed with Porsche. But that's just the start of its overhaul. What is it? The new Audi RS5, larger, lighter, quicker, cleaner and cleverer than the six-year-old model it replaces. It is most of these things because alongside the latest MLB platform, Audi has finally swapped out the old naturally aspirated 4.2-liter V8 for the cutting-edge 2.9-liter twin-turbocharged V6 it has spent the last few years co-developing with Porsche. Naturally, its superior numbers in almost every facet count as reasons to be cheerful, but history dictates caution here, and no little regret. The previous unit was far more than just a tightly wound bundle of numbers, it was arguably one of the last great atmospheric engines, with a throttle response to die for and the kind of lean, caterwauling soundtrack that effectively had your veins spiked at 8,250 revolutions per minute. We'd therefore be remiss not to sound a rhetoric last post at its departure and neon sign post the fact that it was easily the best thing about the last model, which fitting Gallstadt's starchy stereotype about as accurately as a Paul Aner Brewer fits into later hose and, broadly speaking, the old RS5 was too heavy, too anti-engagement and, over time, too obviously overawed by its rear-driven rivals from BMW and Mercedes. A couple of the new car's modifications, then, are notable out of the gate. It's lighter by 60 kg in its regular format, thanks mostly to the 31 kg lighter V6, and UK examples get the mechanical rear sport differential as standard to better complement the Quattro all-wheel drive system and wheel selective torque control. The chassis is new, too, with a 5-link arrangement at the front and back paired with adaptive dampers, RS Sport suspension with dynamic ride control is an additional option, ditto the RS exhaust system and the traditionally undesirable dynamic steering setup. There's also a transmission change, with the V8's dual-clutch 7-speed automatic making way for a ZF8 speed torque converter. That means the car shares an engine with the second-generation Porsche Panamera 4S, but not an entire driveline, the auto is a tweaked version of the S5's automatic. The V6's output is different, too, Audi has eked out 10 bhp more so it can claim to match the outgoing V8's 444 bhp. Peak torque, predictably, is dramatically superior with the V6 summoning up 442 pounds foot from 1,900 revolutions per minute. At the same time, CO2 emissions have been slashed by 17%. What's it like? This being Audi Sport, and an RS model to boot, it naturally looks the business. It signals a mild overhaul of the brand's styling approach, although with its blistered arches, Lacerated air intakes and portal big oval exhaust pipes, it establishes a familiar scene. The proportions feel about the same, too, despite the 74mm of additional length, which is predominantly donated by the MLB's larger wheelbase. The RS5's interior also conforms to type, it's immaculate and brilliantly made and utterly endearing to touch and look at. UK models get Audi's excellent virtual cockpit digital instrument panel as standard, and the test car we drove in Andorra had enough Alcantara on the door cards, steering wheel and gear shifter to neatly distinguish the RS5 from the closely related S5. Startup is slightly less auspicious. Audi Sport has persevered with the soundtrack, boldly equating it to the turbocharged V6 that powered the B5 generation RS4, but its space-edged waffle doesn't cover the sound or reality of two substantial blowers whistling away betwixt the cylinder banks. The engine isn't necessary captive to the rise and fall of the Sirocco, yet nor is it an unchained melody on the V8's Richter scale. That's to be expected. And so is the type of performance, cranked like buttermilk from the distant churn once you're underway. Where its predecessor dispensed progress in escalating staccato lunges at the red line, the V6 unfurls itself through the medium of the mid-range. 
Its search is prodigious, unthreatening and seamless, any concern about the Tiptronic box's lackluster showing in the S5 is swept away by its sure handling of the many rhythmic upshifts required. Around this entirely different sort of engine, Audi has molded a palpably different sort of car. Claims made of its Gran Turismo status within the lineup are not, wildly, at least, overblown. Tested on superheated stretches of deserted French auto route, the RS5 can be characterized as easily the most comfortable car in Audi's lineup. In comfort mode, the traditionally nagging short wave stiffness has been uncoiled by adaptive dampers with enough latitude to finally deliver a sympathetic and supple primary ride. Tie in a dynamic steering system which actually comes good at outside lane motorway speeds, that is competent and thickly accurate, and suddenly you've got a two-door RS car persuasively capable of crossing a continent. That the new V6 plays as compelling a part in that narrative as the V8 did in the old car's motley charm is a massive plus in its favor. Where the minuses occur, they do so with a predictable sense of inevitability. It hardly needs saying that the new RS5 is quicker than the old, and it feels it, there's simply too much torque fermenting in the engine bay for it not to be, but there isn't the same accompanying theatrical fizz to its higher rev function, nor the same pockmarked mechanical shot to its paddle-operated gear changes. That it proves less than mesmerizing in such moments is hardly a shock, and it feeds into the RS5's wider major shortcoming, specifically in handling which still gently refuses to ever come enthralling to life. That's not to say that progress hasn't been confidently made, with less weight over the front axle and the locking rear differential in play, the car is plainly more agile than it's ever been and can at least be goaded into delivering more drive to the outside back wheel. But the adjustability is fleeting, and very promptly tidied up by the drivetrain even with the stability control switched out. Immodest amounts of speed or throttle will simply result in Audi's age-old understeer remedy. Perhaps that's all forgivable against the backdrop of its maker's penchant for massive directional stability, it's rather less easy to absolve the dynamic end of the damper's settings, too firm even for Andorra's roads, or the steering, too impenetrably frustrating for any road, 